Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is for all three of y'all, starting with Mr. Graves. Why did you come forward on this issue? I came forward because I felt that my colleagues did not have a way to mitigate the safety threat, and I wanted to help them. I was trained as an aviation safety officer by the Navy, and this seemed, it just, it just felt right. I felt like I had to help the folks that were still flying and dealing with this. Mr. Grush. Purely a sense of duty. Um, I first swore an oath when I was a cadet 18 years ago, and I, I still uphold that even out of the uniform. Commander. I was pestered uh, by a friend, <laughs> and I asked why, and he said, you're the one person that they can't discredit, and you'll add credibility to the New York Times article. And so after about six times, I said, okay. <laughs> yeah. Honest. Yeah. Um, this town isn't... Uh, made unfortunately by people like y'all. We thank y'all. And I do want to also thank the people in the audience and the people that are watching this that can't be people all over the world that have kept this issue alive. You've endured criticism and derogatory remarks and we're trying to get to the bottom of it. And so God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. We really appreciate you guys and gals. Um, That's why we need term limits. Y'all keep clapping, us politicians just keep talking. So um, let me ask y'all, how can the public contribute to UAP reporting? And what avenues you think are available to the public to report these sightings? Well, Go right down. now, I don't think there is a, a lot of uh, public options for that, every man to be able to report on this. Uh, I think even for professionals that have sensor data that are seeing these on a regular basis, they're still hesitant to come forward. Uh, and so for the general public, I think uh, encouraging the conversations that we're having today, looking for technology solutions that can be distributed uh, so that objective data can be gathered is the first place to go. Mr. Grush. Uh, I'll just touch on the whistleblower side of it. I do encourage you know, current former military intelligence community and, and industry contractors to come forward in a legal way, either through the IC or DOD or whatever the cognizant IGs are, um, to, to lead, you know, lead, you know, join me in this discussion. Commander, and I'm I guess I should say this for the record. My daddy was United States Marine Corps, First Marine Division. So, Hoorah. yes, sir. He was old school. Him and Chesty Puller on Pelalu. So, thank oh, you, wow. brother. <laughs> wow. Yes, sir. Um, I'm not. I'm not anything like my daddy. He was incredible. I'm very mediocre to say the least. Fine. But go you ahead. You seem to be doing fine. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I, you know, I was an accident investigator. So the biggest thing that you learn, and I think that witnesses need to, to do, is one: don't try and make the fish bigger than it was. Stick to the facts, write it down, and don't speculate what you think it is because it will sway your decision. Just write the facts down. We can get all the facts together and we can start to investigate and get a real honest story instead of it was this big. Thank you all, and I want to thank everybody. We made history today. Mr. Chairman, I yield. Thank you much, Mr. Garcia. Thank you. I know now we're